Hello friends and welcome to my video on Stable Diffusion. So as you know, Stable Diffusion 1.5 came out just a week ago or so. And so I was kind of interested in finding out uh, how the new Stable Diffusion uh, version is uh, working out, uh, given the same prompts. And also I've discovered, uh, thanks to Itrepreneur, that uh, there are two other uh, Stable Diffusion checkpoints, which has gracefully uploaded for us to download and try. So I downloaded those checkpoints as well. So now I have this video where I have this multiple different uh, stable diffusion checkpoints. So now I'm able to compare uh, different types of prompts and see how uh, it varies across these checkpoints. So uh, I have three different types of uh, prompts. One of them is a portrait kind of a, a prompt. The other one is a landscape kind of prompt. And the third one is a special prompt for a uh, particularly different uh, special type of uh, checkpoint so the first checkpoint as you can see this is my uh, prompt i've kept everything basic uh, i've kept the image size 512 by 512 and all the different parameters at their base parameters which means that the cfd scale and the denoising strength were the default values and i did not change anything so all of these things remained exactly the same all across all of those uh, prompts and all of those um, checkpoints except I have only varied something steps for every checkpoint I have tried 20 something steps and then 50 something steps because I want to see if higher something steps can give me better results or different results so this is the first experiment that I did um, it's a very simple uh, portrait as you can see it's a portrait prompt portrait based prompt and in stable diffusion 1.4 and 1.5 if we uh, take both of them into consideration. So we see that they produce uh, very similar images for a given number of something steps. So on the left hand column, we have 20 steps. On the right hand column, we have 50 steps. So as expected, higher steps actually give us an uh, image with better detail. There are a lot more going on in these pictures. Uh, and, uh, and the quality of the eyes and face and various other um, elements of the image is much better. However, in 20 steps, I also get very good images. I'm not disappointed at all. So this is, so the, uh, the first row is the result that I got with uh, stable diffusion uh, version 1.4. And the second one is with stable diffusion uh, version 1.5. Then I tried the mid journey uh, stable diffusion checkpoint. Interestingly enough, it does create images which are very similar to images that I would expect to get from mid journey. Now I did not exactly try the same prompt on mid journey because because obviously the model that was trained by uh, the owners or the designers of mid journey are probably far more superior uh, than the checkpoint that i have here and this checkpoint is basically uh, something that was uh, trained using various uh, mid journey uh, images so it was a trained uh, uh, checkpoint to look like mid journey not necessarily that this is the exact same checkpoint that mid journey uses However, if you look at the differences between 1.5 and the mid journey checkpoints, you see that the mid journey images are a bit more artistic, a uh, bit more on the creative side. Um, I wouldn't say that the SD ones are not so creative, but, but you know the difference when you see uh, in, uh, in the way that the images were produced. And finally, I tried the disco diffusion uh, checkpoint and the results were completely different. I mean, if you look at the prompt, it's actually uh, a character from Genshin. This character is obviously a very Asian character, but with Disco Diffusion, I think this is this looks like a very European character, completely different than the first uh, three results uh, using the same prompt. So definitely Disco Diffusion checkpoint was trained with uh, various images from Disco Diffusion, and that is what's showing in these renders. So next, um, I tried uh, I tried a landscape kind of an image. So this is uh, the, uh, the prompt was an elven castle in the mountain. So as you can see, this is the result we get from stable diffusion 1.4, which is not bad. Uh, but I think that uh, perhaps I get a little bit more detail in stable diffusion 1.5. Uh, you know, uh, uh, on the left hand side, if you compare what we get from 1.5 with 20 steps versus what we get from 1.5. Uh, 4 with 20 steps and again what we get from 1.4 with 50 steps versus 1.5 with 50 steps they are perhaps the same image you can argue but with slight difference and personally if you ask me 
I prefer this one here, which is from Stable Diffusion 1.4. And for uh, 50 steps, I actually prefer uh, the version which is uh, Stable Diffusion 1.5. Uh, going on to Mid Journey, of course, it's trained by Mid Journey, so it's much more artistic. It's much more. Uh, it's as if like hand painted or an artist has really worked, uh, you know, uh, to create this kind of image. So obviously, if you ask me to choose between stable diffusion outputs and mid journey outputs, I think it's easy that uh, people are going to prefer and also I'm going to prefer the mid journey checkpoint output. But with disco diffusion, I get something that's completely different. Uh, perhaps this is more true to the kind of prompt that I've used because the prompt I used was an elven castle in the mountain. So, uh, well, uh, the other checkpoints do produce a castle in the mountain, but I think that perhaps this is much more true to the fantasy idea of the prompt. It does look like a image from a fantasy novel and something that the elves would probably create on a mountain. Uh, one thing to note was that with disco diffusion, uh, with 20 steps, I didn't get very good image. But with 50 steps, I think I got a good image because I think in 20 steps, probably the work was not really completed. And if I compare with the 20 steps from here, uh, although this is quite as good as the 50 steps, but I think that once again with uh, 50 steps, I got a better image with Disco Diffusion. So if you're planning on using the Disco Diffusion uh, checkpoint, uh, you have to go with higher steps. Uh, the higher the steps, uh, the better the uh, results you're going to get. So finally, another special checkpoint, uh, thanks to Actopreneur. So this is the robot diffusion, uh, which was specifically designed for the creation of robots and androids and those kind of stuff. So thanks to Actopreneur for this, uh, for sharing this special checkpoint with us. So once again, just like the previous experiments, um, I have uh, created an image from a prompt and this is a complicated prompt. So this is a prompt which I got from Lexica and it's a very complex kind of prompt because I really wanted to test uh, how well does this uh, robot diffusion works with this kind of complex uh, prompts with a lot of things uh, in it. So this is the results. As you can see, uh, the left column is uh, 20 steps, right column is uh, 50 steps. And if we compare the four images we, go, uh, we got from Stable Diffusion 1.4 and 1.5, I feel that uh, 1.5 with 50 steps probably gave me the best image. So which gives me the idea that if you have a very complex prompt with a lot of things, with multiple things in the description, then you need to go for higher and higher prompt. Uh, the reason I like the fourth, the final picture, uh, Stable Diffusion 1.5 with 50 steps is because it got so many of the things right. It has the doll face. It does look like a female robot and the all is actually there. Now, what were the result from uh, Mid Journey? So this is the result from Mid Journey. Again, very artsy, very creative, but perhaps not exactly what I uh, what I wanted uh, from the prompt or what I expected from the prompt. Uh, going to Disco Diffusion as usual, it gives me completely different stuff. Like this images from Disco Diffusion is not even related to what I really wanted. Yes, I do get a female robot, but this is unlike what I had in my imagination. Quite frankly, there is no old nothing like that. All right. It's not a bad image, but it's completely out there image. All right. Uh, I think it has to do with the way that this diffusion checkpoint was actually trained. And finally, what do we get using robot diffusion? So yes, we, well, if you're going to create robots and androids, then I think that this is the best option because yes, these two renders really does look like they're androids or robots. They look like they're made from machines instead of being organic, they're less organic. And also uh, what it had done is it incorporated the idea of an owl into the face of the robot. So, so I think it combined two ideas of having an owl and having a female robot together in one image. And it's not really a bad image. In fact, uh, if I, li I, I really like this compared to this, I think this is a very nice image. This is something that will look really good in print or somewhere. I feel that this is what the objective of uh, robot diffusion checkpoint is that it gives you great looking robots, great looking androids. And, uh, and you know, like it's, it's, it's much closer or as close as possible to uh, the prompt that you'd give me. Let's look at the prompt one more because I said it's a complex uh, prompt. So yes, it's artistic black and white and it's a portrait of a young, beautiful, delicate female robot. 
it's a witch and there's an all with orchid so um if you look at it yes it looks like a witch it's a beautiful delicate robot it has the eyes of an owl well you, there is an orchid but then again there is an orchid in any of the pictures uh you can argue that mid journey one has some kind of an orchid there are owls and it's very artistic um, you know I'm, i don't mind but i think that if you're really going to create only robots and very unique looking robots then definitely use a robot diffusion checkpoint and if you're looking for very artsy kind of outputs use mid journey or stick with stable diffusion all of them give you actually very good results very good outputs and the idea is that the higher number of steps that you let uh, the software work with the better results you're going to get so i just wanted to share uh, the outputs of the experiments that i did this morning and i felt that it was better doing a video than just to post the picture so that uh, the steps that i did or what i was trying to do can be communicated much more clearly by doing a video so guys i'll do a video again on some interesting thing that i have tried and share my results and outputs with you till then uh, say goodbye